still is The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. And uh, of course, uh, continuing with our conversations this morning, the federal government says it has no intention of shutting down social media, but it will regulate the platforms. It said its plan is to regulate social media to be responsible and refrain from being a purveyor of fake news and hate speech. The Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, stated this when he inspected the headquarters of the nation newspaper and TV Continental that were attacked in the aftermath of the NSARS protest. Speaking at the premises of the nation, the minister said uh, Mohammed Buhari, the president and his administration, has high regards for freedom of the press. The government's early announcement to regulate social media was met with criticism. He said his recent call for the regulation of the excesses of uh, social media should not be misconstrued for a total ban. And of course, uh, joining us to have a quick conversation about this is uh, Libra Soshoma, a legal practitioner who joins us here in the studio, and Mr. Tony Usidame, a public relations expert. Thank you both for joining us. Uh, good morning, Tony. And me. Thank you for joining us. All right, I'll start with you, Mr. Oshima. Uh, let me get a quick quote from what the minister said. He said, we must regulate social media in a manner uh, that it does not become a purveyor of fake news and hate speech, end quote. Uh, what do you understand by this particular statement? If you can uh, break it down for us, considering the fluid nature of information uh, on social media. Yeah, um, I think um, the minister is... Um, either delusional or he does not understand um, what regulation means, you know, in this, you know, uh, digital age. Um, I say this, these were statements made, you know, when he inspected a nation newspaper that was burnt by um, protesters. And the implication is that it was social media fake news that led to that action. The government is still living in denial. It's living in denial. Who will regulate government activities and lack of humanity? God, there is a reason and purpose for government. We should understand it from that point of view first. Government itself created these people they are calling miscreants and thugs today. The protest did not start on the day these places were burnt. It started long before then. And so, when government does not have the right uh, attitude or panacea to ameliorate a problem, you know, they use that same old method that they have they are used to that. The Minister for Transportation, Amechi, talked about deploy soldiers, deploy police. And then you escalate the issue. Rather than accept that responsibility, that it was your insensitivity that escalated this issue, you're looking for who to blame. Oh, social media created this. Why, if it is social media, why are they blaming, why are they finding television houses? You respect the media. But yet you are finding, telev finding television houses for beaming a protest that you accepted was peaceful. It's contradictory. And, and so, and that's why for me, the government needs to understand that when you own up to your responsibility, you won't have this kind of breakdown and all law, of law and order. Social media can be regulated. But... You know, to whom much is given, much is expected. If government regulates its own activity and its own way of dealing with its people, naturally, social media itself that, will be regulated. That's the, the, that's the part where clarity is needed. Uh, let me come to who, um, um, Mr. Tony Usidame. The part about the definition of regulation, because we know that these um, um, platforms, Google, Twitter, Facebook, all have um, self-regulatory mechanism, right? So 
when he talks about regulating, we also have something about the social media bill yes. uh, that's still controversial. So please, can you help us understand regulating in the contest uh, that um, Mr. Lai Muhammad is uh, insisting? Okay, thank you for that question. But, you know, just before I answer, let me quickly, quickly um, buttress something that Mr. Liberos just said. Uh, the fact that the looting and wanton destruction of private um, public property that we saw was not carried out by the peaceful protesters. This was carried out by unscrupulous elements in the society that you can't join with the uh, peaceful or legitimate aspirations of the NSAS protesters. I thought it's, it was important to make that distinction because the narrative you see being uh, pushed by public officials and also most media is that it is the NSAS protesters themselves that were carrying out this destruction and looting. So we need to make a distinction between both events. Now, um, social media, back to social media and regulation, I agree that some form of regulation is necessary, as well as the enforcement of existing legislation. However, as in every true democracy, based on the freedom, uh, free speech principle, the power of the state to limit or impose civility and security restrictions on public discourse is very, very, very limited. And so the responsibility of moderating and regulating the social media space falls on intermediaries, intermediaries such as the social media companies themselves. This is what obtains in democracies around the world because government cannot be seen to be gag the public space, which is a tool for progress. When you have divergent views, when you have dissenting views about issues, the, it is this healthy debate that form or propels society forward. But it is not the place of government based on the constitutional rights of citizens to free speech and freedom of expression. That duty falls on the social media companies. And as you rightly said, they are stepping up to this responsibility. Facebook, Twitter, all have rules that guide the community, that guide relationships in the community. When people post stuff nowadays, Facebook, Twitter, and all the other social medias are quick to flag them once they have confirmed that they are uh, uh, illegal materials or, or fake news. So they are living to their responsibility. Government, rather than look to adding additional regulation, should look at existing legislation. There's, there's legislation against uh, li uh, the libel, yeah. for instance. There's legislation against uh, uh, slander. They can look at some of this already existing legislation. There's also legislation guiding the activities of the traditional media, some of which can be extended to the social media aspect. But we do not need additional uh, regulation for the social media because this will be seen to go against the principles of free, free speech, which democracy guarantees citizens. All right, I'm, I'm going to go back to um, uh, Liberal Sushuma. Um, in November 2019, there was something called the uh, Protection from Internet Falsehood and Malicious Information uh, Bill, which was also rejected. Um, and, uh, of course, there was a lot of conversation with, with regards to that. It, w what is the difference between that era and what we are seeing today um, with regards to the government's approach towards um, social media? You know, um, during the colonial era, there was this, um, this seditious um, law um, created by the colonial masters to, you know, because of the uprising of uh, political activism. And, and so um, that law had been nullified by the courts as anti-democratic. And then, um, you know, until recently, government at some point still tried to charge people uh, under 
you know, seditious publications, that these are publications that are inciting the people. And who determines what is incisive? It is the court that determines what's incisive. You can sit down in the comfort of your room and then somebody says that you are wearing a dark suit and you say it's offensive because for you this is a gray suit. And so for trying to misrepresent that hate speech and then in your head you just determine it's hate speech. You arrest the person and then everybody's pleading with you to let go. Tony said there are existing laws. So how much of those existing laws, like, you know, libel, have we used as a social, as a government used to charge, you know, some of these people you perceive, you know, are fanning the embers of misinformation or that you have libeled the, somebody or maybe a government official. We've seen situations where, you know, somebody carried, just in the last election in Edo, Somebody alleged that an INEC official went to the governor's house to receive money. He sued. The matter is in court as I speak in Edo State. He went to court. That information was carried through social media. He issued, you know, a report to that effect. The man went to court to say, you have libeled me. The matter is currently before the court. And so, what government, because Alaji Lai Mohammed White's in opposition, he knew the importance of, you know, fake news and rumor. There was a time Alaji Lai Mohammed alleged that the government, you know, of the day at that time were trying to kill him. Obasanjo even wrote a letter and said that the government was training snipers. And then um, Erufai said he was the first target. Amechi said he was the second target. They started listing themselves. So they understood the importance of the fake news that they used to ride to government. And so, it's like it's coming, they're scared that this same thing can be used against them. And so they sit down. Anytime there is an agitation, anytime there's criticism, anytime there's confrontation, you know, the first thing, rather than address the issues, why are people, you know, angry? People are saying there's hunger in the land. Truly, is there hunger in the land? How do we address it? Because if you indeed address it, then there won't be hunger. So nobody will be crying there's hunger when there is, you know, food. Rather than address those things, you say, no, 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 no. I think it's because they have access to information. It's because they have access to um, um, social media. So that is why you can just wake up and do a video of what is happening. Eyewitness reports. Even television these days, newspapers rely on eyewitness reports. Even government is attempting to also use social media, I just even though, that they, even though they are doing catch up. You know, so rather than sit back and actually understand, so you see, oh yes, fake news um, um, uh, 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 regulation bill. Tony talked about you know, how other countries have been able to regulate this. What do they do? Simple. You meet with the service providers. And the service providers don't even need Nigerian government to meet with them because, you know, in other society, they understand the import of, you know, carrying fake news. And so what they do, they also verify at their end to say these are fake news. If you remember quickly, BBC, during the NSAS protest, did a, a chronological analysis of all of the photographs and in some cases, videos that were used to portray events that were previous events. You know, not because the Nigerian government says said so, but because they understand the responsibility of modern um, uh, media practice. The same thing, I don't think you will yeah. post a video on, on TV now yes. without verifying the source. You know, because you also understand the responsibility. So, uh, so you don't need Nigerian government to come breathe down your neck. So what Nigerian government should be doing is if you give good governance, you would have reduced the hatred from the people who are supposed to love you. Do, okay. do you think that we, we stand, uh, there is so much danger with regards um, inciting violence from social media, the way, you know, that it is being portrayed? Because if you watch, you know, the videos from, you know, the Minister of Information, um, Lai Mohammed, you know, he, he, you know, makes it look like we are almost going to be facing another pandemic. Um, um, uh, as bad as COVID-19 from social media. No, no, no. He cited, um, quickly, he cited the case of Rwanda. 
a thousand people died. But he misrepresented the fact of that case because the matter went to court at the Nurebon Tribunal. Three um, uh, media houses as, uh, owners were charged and sentenced to jail. What happened was because they incited specifically. They started what they did with that in that um, 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 uh, uh, how they found the embers of that carnage was the fact that they started listing the names of members of uh, Tusis leaders and then they started giving their addresses using their platform. You know, so what they were doing was inciting the people against some specific persons. And so the people would go to these houses and burn them. Oh, yes, this person is a Tusis, and he did this. This is where he lived. This was what he had done before. Yes, that's why I say it's a two-way traffic. The first thing should be government, the people that are angry, why are they angry? This miscreant, these hoodlums that you call hoodlums and thugs, what, was this the generation in Nigeria handed over to you by you know, the founding fathers? Was right. this in Nigeria that you promised? How do we ensure that we reduce the army of unemployed you so that even if you want to foment trouble, you will not have this number of people? Why did the former president decide to create Alma Jury School? Because they understand the import of education. Why did uh, Chief Obafemi Awolowo decide to give free education in the West? Because they understand the importance of education to, you know, a citizen. In right, the bring absence in. of all of that, you're going to have an army of unemployed, uneducated people all right, let's bring who want to light a match. You know, it can, you won't determine the extent of the, of, of, of the damage. All right, uh, Mr. Usidame, I, I want to come back to you now. Um, the, the comments by the Minister um, of uh, Information um, didn't just narrow itself to social media. He did say something along the lines of uh, the government will continue to support responsible journalism. Uh, there were allusions that um, the uh, media as a conventional body also did not do what they were supposed to do. And there is this message, especially when it comes to the recent coverage of the NSARS protests, uh, there was allusion, I mean, messages being shared on social media referring to um, a, a particular um, reportage that turned out to be wrong about snipers at some hotel uh, that were there to shoot at the uh, NSARS protesters. So my question is, from all that you have observed as a uh, public relations expert, would you say that the media was not responsible enough when it came to the reportage of the NSARS protest? Let, let's just take that as um, a case study. Okay. Okay, first and foremost, as you know, uh, the media is a very, very important uh, tool for, for democracy because the, the media gives a voice. I'm, I'm talking about the media generally, including traditional and, of course, um, the digital media, gives a voice to the voiceless, people who ordinarily uh, would not have been heard. Um, the social media era has made that um, characteristic or attribute of the media even more important because now um, with simple uh, a simple phone and data somebody that you know would not have made it to the news for instance on on plus tv africa can actually air their views about a certain you know issue that affects them uh, just as just as we use the social media to mobilize for the sars campaign so the media um, of course, has to be recognized as as one of the um, of democracy and an important one at that, where everybody, every citizen, can have their voices heard. Yes, I agree. As I, as I said before, that some form of regulation is necessary, and and I, I look at this in this way that there are three levels of safeguard. The first is the government. Okay, I'm, uh, Mr. Sidame, not, not, to, not to interrupt you, um, I, I wanted you to speak specifically on conventional media uh, because he also uh, talked about uh, supporting responsible uh, journalism. And the question um, is, do you think that the reportage, the way this uh, NSARS protest was captured by mainstream media was 
there was some level of irresponsibility? No, I mean, personally, uh, from, from where, where I am sitting, and this is just my opinion, I think the media did a fantastic job of covering this NSAS protest as it should. That is not to say that certain half-truths or misinformation didn't, you know, slip in at some point somewhere. And like uh, Mr. Libero said, uh, some media houses have come to correct some of this misinformation that was being shared. But generally, the media uh, has been seen to have done its, its duty to the people, its duty to the society, its duty to promoting democracy in the country by airing this protest uh, which, which I said is a legitimate protest. Now, the, the freedom that the Constitution guarantees citizens, that's a freedom to the right to free speech and freedom of expression, also imposes on them the responsibility for what they share. So while we're saying government has no business looking for additional uh, regulations for the social media space, we're also saying that as citizens, we also have a responsibility to play. Remember that the social media companies themselves need time to verify whatever news is being put out there. Um, some countries that have added additional regulations, um, say 24 to 4. Okay, I think news that items that are deemed to be illegal are removed. Health, the companies uh, face fines. In Germany, in 2018, they instituted a bill called the Nets DG Bill, which um, um, imposes on social media companies a fine of 50 million euros if news items that are found to be fake are not removed. Russia had something similar uh, some years earlier in 2015. You know, but I don't want to go into... All right. All right. Um, we, we have Sousa to Dame, be yeah. in you know, patient what with the network. Yeah. It's still okay. hanging in there. So I'm, I'm going to, uh, we'll probably have to, you know, take a break with him there and then go back to uh, Libra Soshoma. Um, I, I want, you know, you, you to also speak with regards, um, if, if there truly are genuine fears of um, the dangers of social media that we should not also ignore, even if we do, we, you know, um, a lot of people are speaking against um, regulation and control. Um, if you look at, you know, some things that have happened in, in the North, you know, a couple of years ago, um, look at also the reactions to the Charlie Hebdo um, cartoons, you know, that eventually led to about the killing of 12 of their uh, staff and riots, you know, in different part, parts of the world. Um, um, what ways can we, or can the Nigerian government also control, you know, that type of incident here in Nigeria? Yeah. Um, and is that also one of the things that, you know, the current administration might be trying to, to save us from? No, that's not what they are trying to save us from. I agree that every, every society, there's nothing like a free society in the world. Where your rights stops, that's where mine begins. Where the government's rights stops, that's where ours begin. Where ours stop, that's where government's rights. And so the essence of having a government is to you know, regulate and control. While they are regulating, they also, also need to regulate themselves. And that's why we say, you know, um, he, you must also learn to control those that are controlling you. You know, so it's a two-way traffic. And so, yes, I agree. There's need for some form of regulation. But before I go there, I want to quickly, you know, say something that the report touch that Felicity spoke about, about Sniper and all of that. Also, the, the bank admitted that they actually had people on top of that building, but that what they were doing was different from what was reported. And so the, the conventional media didn't just report what didn't happen. They probably would have misrepresented what those people were doing there. And that was but, the danger. That, but, also, yes. but also, there's need to further investigate, if truly, because now in Nigeria, anything can happen. Yes, truly. We don't just, you don't just say because the bank has said. There's also a need for, the, I would have expected a need for, you know, an independent verification of the fact whether it was actually, you know, people repairing the mast or whether it was as was reported. That, that I'm not, not trying to hold brief yeah. for anybody. And also, to now correct some of these things, 
what well, the first thing is, to whom much is given, much is expected. Government should first and foremost be responsible and responsive. He who comes to equity must come with clean hands. And so, the Metasine issues in the north wasn't caused by social media. The riot you're talking about wasn't caused, the cartoon wasn't caused by social media. It was even in newspapers, conventional. And, and so, we have been having uprising in Nigeria. We have been having demonstrations. And government had consistently used force rather than persuasion to queer such protest. And it wasn't social media that gave rise to those protests. And secondly also, you notice that there was a twist that social media introduced to this protest. Now, because most of the people who ordinarily would have used force now know that people, videos will go out there. Some of them, thanks to them and kudos to them, deploy professionalism to appeal and, you know, appeal to the sense of emotions and feelings of these protesters. And you saw them at the end of the day, you know, they disperse. So, for me, that's the first responsibility of government. Before okay. you regulate, there are existing law. How much of those laws have we used, you know, judiciously to ensure that, you know, you win the trust. So give a, 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 a fair assessment and a balance to, to the fact that, yes, government is fair in this. And you know what is creating all of this? Because government has never been fair. And so in a situation where you are not fair, you create the moment anything you do, you raise suspicion. Yeah, and, 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 so and, your, and your, so your position is always once we get governance right, we'll get a lot more. Once you get governance right, right, all right let's, you won't let's have bring it quickly. In. You won't have this army of young people. All right, we're, we're you won't have out of time. opportunities. Let's let's, yeah. let's bring in Mr. Usidame. Um, I want to ask you um, about the campaign by. Lai Muhammad. He has said that it's not the beginning. It's not the first time he's talking. He started since 2017, continued in 2018, 2019, this is 2020. Um, in spite of all the efforts that he seems to have expanded towards um, curbing or regulating social media, um, he still doesn't seem to have gotten what he wanted. So my question is, there are those alluding that Lai Mohammed is simply blustering to show relevance of his position other than truly making a change in trying to regulate uh, social media and curb fake news. What do you say to that? Okay, well, it can, it can show relevance. And the way the can, government can show relevance is by looking at the people as partners, not as enemies. This same social media that is being demonized, the government can leverage social media to facilitate uh, participation in politics, in arts, in culture. Listen, there are about 27 million social media users in Nigeria, according to a 2010 report um, on datareporter.com. All 27 million social media users cannot be against the government. Okay, so the government must begin to use this same instrument that it wants so much to regulate to promote the good that it is doing. It can start, facilitate uh, um, involvement in politics, in arts, in culture. It can start discussions on policy issues, and then it can curate public opinion on these issues with a view to getting feedback that will be used to make more people-centric policies. Now, the problem is that the agencies of government that should be doing this, starting with the National Orientation Agency, even the aides appointed, the media aides appointed from the president to the governors, many of them are not using the media to their advantage in promoting the good that is in the society. So rather than looking for additional regulation, first let them get more competent people in these places and let them begin to use social media as uh, a force for good. The people are not always out to spread false information. The people are not always out to um, hamper progress of society. Government needs to understand that, that the people can be partners with it, but it needs to get those that are... 
All right, uh, Mr. Usidame, yeah. um, I, I get your point, uh, but I'm, I'm also it's looking to, uh, because the person that has been at the forefront of these social media campaign regulations has been Lai Mohammed. Um, I'm asking, he's been doing this for a while, this is 2020, and he doesn't seem to, um, would you say he has a, achieved something, or would you s agree with those that say, say he is just uh, blustering and isn't going to achieve much? Of course, if he continues this way, he won't achieve much because we're in a democratic society. Uh, the people are more alive to their responsibility. They are more aware of their constitutional rights. And the, the, the longer he goes on with this, the more he would meet um, a refuser. So rather than expend his energy on this, what I am saying is look for how to use this same social media in promoting the good, whatever good that government is doing. Be an example of how social media could have been used. One, when people started to loot palliatives, the Kakovi palliatives, news went round that these were palliatives that had been distributed by the humanitarian minister months back. It was only after the people discovered and started looting that we started hearing uh, explanations from government that, no, this was a private sector initiative that came late September. Imagine if government had used this same instrument to enlighten the people as to why it had to house some of those palliatives while it either, uh, as they said, repackaged or uh, set out the best distribution system. Imagine how much oh. of the looting would have been oh, prevented. Had they used this... Okay, we are always step in when his network uh, freezes. <laughs> <laughs> Tony, oh. Sudame, hold on. Uh, Liberal Sushoma, I want you to speak on what the government, what you would say the government um, is truly defining as fake news. Yes, is it just yeah. any lie? Because, and what I'm asking <laughs> is because the army um, put out a statement saying that, you know, soldiers weren't present at the Lekki toll gates. Yes. Is, is that, is that you, fake news? You, it's, it's, it, you see, when the army says, so, so the as we are not present. That's fake news. <laughs> so, That's a lie. So should and then social media. So who do we wait. now believe? Everyone you know when, says wait. fake news. When, when the army said, so the as we are not present. So that's why government wants to regulate social media. Social media put a hole to that lie by going further to probe, present pictures and videos that were undisputable, and then. When the governor of Lagos State was confronted with these hard facts and hard evidence, he caved in by saying the soldiers initially said powers beyond his control. And you know, powers beyond your control are, is vague, unambiguous, uh, ambiguous. And so how do you put a finger to powers beyond your control? And so when he was confronted with this further information provided by social media, responsible social media user, he caved in and admitted that the army were there. And then, at that point, the army now also caved in without apologies to say we were invited by Lagos State Government. Initially, Lagos State Government denied. Till now, they still not owned up. You know, so, and that's the power of the media. Even the conventional media also now resort to usage of social media. Are you saying that all of those people also you know, uh, because you have not been able to drag them in to the broadcast organization code that you're using to flog, you know, conventional medias into line. I, I, there was a time in this country that when you tune in to any television, the first thing you hear, the governor of this state, the president of, you know, it was just about what government want people to hear. Now, the people also are using the social media platform to tell government what they want to hear. And like Tony had said, I had conversed this position, you know, also at various fora, that, look, you now understand the super highway of information. And if you have something to push, you have information to share. They also use social media. They have followers on Twitter. How is it that... You, if you, you're looking for any information in any government agency in Sena society now, you just log on to this, uh, 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 their website, exactly. and boom, you have all the information you need. If not all, you can even call 
But here in Nigeria, go to Ministry of Education, Ministry of Information website. I tell you, the information there is limited. Go to National Orientation Agency website. There is nothing. And so, in the absence of this information from government, people will create rumor. And when rumor thrives, I always say, even intellectuals are turned to convey your bed. So what the providers of these media platforms are doing now is to also verify. They've created, they've, they've taken, you know, 10 steps ahead of even the government. They've created other platforms for verifying some of this um, 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 information so that they don't also push social media uh, wrong information because people also are beginning to be aware. Okay. You know, they're holding them, uh, um, um, they, they are being responsible for what they promote. So what government can do, how do you call, cure this menace? You understand that it is a, a platform that has come to stay. If you remember, the, when newspaper first came, a lot of people said he would die a natural death. But today, there's a new media that is taking over from the newspaper that even the newspapers also now are using it. So what government should do? You study it. How do we ensure that, you know, we would also use the same platform to educate and create orientation for the young people? As we are here now, there are so many people world over who are watching us using the social media platform. And so they don't need to have a box in the room to watch. So, but because government is bereft of this idea of how to use, they are always reacting rather than be proactive. And so, it's a, a, a local mentality of if we not feel use them, make we destroy them. Okay, I, I, I want, I want, Tony Osidam, I haven't spoken to you, I haven't um, really asked you a lot of questions. I, I want you to go further, you know, from what Liberal Social here has said. Um, at, at what point should it become a crime? Is it just telling lies on social media? Or should it be um, statements that are made that lead to loss of lives and property? For example, if I go on Twitter now and I see um, someone, you know, tweet that Osao Geogboam has a very big nose and should not be on TV, and <laughs> I get riled up, I'm upset, a couple of people who follow me on social media get upset also and start burning property, should that be enough to be seen as a crime? And you know, want to you know regulate social media because of things like that, or should there be a clear-cut way of determining when a person has broken whatever laws are in place? Yeah, listen, like, like Libera said earlier, you don't need extra regulation. There's all, already provision for this. Um, some years back, a particular entertainer tweeted something about the Southern Kaduna violence that almost instigated another attack in that uh, particular state. And then he realized that he was misinformed by his driver, I think. Yes. And then he quickly put it out there that he was, uh, he was sorry and he, he, he um, recalled that particular uh, tweet. The governor of the state, El Rufai, actually took this man to court based on existing leg legislation. So we do not need new leg legislation. There are laws in place already. You as an individual, when somebody tweets something that damages your reputation, aside from the government, you as an individual also have um, recourse to the law and the, the laws to call upon in times like this. So issues that bother on, you know, hate crimes, on um, terrorism, on... Um, you know, inciting violence, those are issues that you can use existing laws to prosecute people who have been found to, to be errant. You do not need additional legislation. All you right. do not need additional bill to regulate the social media. Mr. Sidame, thank you very much uh, for your contributions on The Breakfast this morning. Thank you for having me. And Mr. Liberos Oshama, pleasure always to have you on The Breakfast. Same here. I'm, I'm, I'm personally worried, you know, about, you know, when they say things that incite violence. Anything can, you know, be used to incite violence. I might get upset tomorrow because I saw a tweet I didn't like and start burning things. You know, should the person who tweeted that, you know, then be taken to court because 
you know, me and my gang decided ignorance. to Ignorance. Ignorance is um, not an excuse. I mean, uh, the lawyer here will confirm that. Ignorance is not an excuse in the law. You cannot tweet something that could inflame uh, the polity and then you say, oh, I'm sorry about it. The damage has been done. What if it's, it's still, true? It's, that is, if it is untrue, that's what I'm saying. So if what if it it's is true? Untrue, it depends on, I don't know what you mean by this. What we're talking about if, is if, fake news, things that yeah. are incorrect. We're not, if it is true, we know it is true, you wouldn't have any reason to remove it. Yeah, so I'm, but I'm, if I'm, it I'm is trying untrue, to be, I'm trying to play devil's advocate here. So what if what, if what the person tweeted is true? Then we don't have a conversation about no, fake news. No, no, no. So what if, so what if what the, what the person tweeted is true, but it got people riled up because that truth was revealed and they burnt down stuff? That, that is not fake violence, news. I don't think it? that is the reason, that is the context of this conversation. <laughs> the context of this conversation is fake news. Uh, again, uh, the question you raised that was really important that I think we need to um, get right is the definition exactly. of fake news. Because anybody can say this is fake news it when could, could it's actually um, a real news. So, I mean. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.